Jace's trial is an utter farce. Let's start with the less obvious stuff and work our way up the ladder of egregiousness. I'm going to assume that there actually is some kind of separate court system that normally handles the hearing of accused and the sentencing of the criminal. It would be ridiculous if this council of seven handled every single trial themselves in the whole of Piltover. After all, they are the topmost authority in the city and as such must have more pressing matters of governing on their plate, so this must be a special occasion, since this is such a high profile case. That being said, apparently this highest governing body of Piltover can arbitrarily choose to act as the judge and jury in any criminal case they wish. For comparison, that's the same as if the president of a country suddenly decided that they are going to circumvent the local justice system, dismiss the power of due process, and act as the sole authority of law and order. There is a word for that. It's tyranny. There is a reason why we scatter political and judicial power to separate institutes, so that no one group or a person has too much power. And that's only the beginning. Jace is brought to trial alone, no defense attorney, no official counsel, no one looking out for him and his interests. He stands in front of the highest nobility of Piltover, the rich and the powerful, all looking for someone to blame for the chaos. The whole process is against Jace from the start. They are not going to be fair to him, obviously. And since we are speaking of arcane-induced shenanigans, a witch trial is a rather fitting term here. You are accused of illegal experimentation and endangering the citizens of Piltover. What do you have to say for yourself? The materials were far more dangerous than I was aware of, and I now know my actions were against Academy regulations. What I did endangered people. It was reckless, and for that I'm sorry. I ask the council's forgiveness, and I hope that I can continue my studies. Luckily for Chase, one of the council members just so happens to be his old professor, and another one is the sponsor of his research, as well as the mother of his best friend, so he has at least a couple of people speaking for him. As Chase's patron of many years, I can speak for his character. I believe that one day, he will be a great contributor to our society. He destroyed a building. Is this the sort of contribution we can expect? If you were a scientist, you'd know you can't make a prototype without breaking a few wrenches. <laughs> Just ignore the fact that one of these two is trying to keep the details of the case secret, and another one has her own finances and reputation on the line. There has never been a more obvious conflict of interest. Also, in this high-profile trial, in front of the city's high society, the judge, the jury, and the character witness for the defendant are the exact same people. And all of this is allowed to just happen? Insanity. And imagine this. What if Chase's former teacher had been anyone else? What if his patron had been anyone else? What if the person in Chase's place had been anyone else? No friends in the council, no sway, no character witness. Sucks to be them. And as the final flip of the proverbial bird to the concept of fair and just trial, once the time comes for this group of judges slash jury to vote on the verdict, one of the members gives their colleague the evil eye, making them change their vote. What? The fuck? There is literal spotlight on you, the room is filled with people, you are not being discreet, everyone saw you do this, you cannot get away with this. How is any of this possible? How do the people of this city allow this to happen? There is obvious corruption on full display. Forget about the class divide and worker riots. The nobility of Piltover should be livid with this kind of egocentric dealings and outright vice amongst their leaders. 
they aren't even trying to hide it. And this next thing happens way later, but I might as well mention it here. The council is shown to have the power to add more seats to the table, as well as having the power to vote members out of the council. Which means that these people are not elected by the public. Heimerdinger is old enough to be part of the original council from hundreds of years past when the city was first established. But as for the rest of them, how did they gain their position? All the seats are held by notable people, merchants, industrialists, visionaries, people who fuel the city, so to speak. But why these specific people? Were they all invited by each other? Did they inherit their position from the former head of their noble house? Whatever the case, this kind of governing body, people who nominate each other, bolster each other, and can only be brought down by each other, is practically begging for corruption. It is fundamentally broken. The people governing the common folk need to be also accountable to the common folk in return. The public needs to have the leader's balls in their grasp, to put it plainly. This is the only way to ensure that the decisions from high up are made for the good of all the people, instead of a specific few. Piltover is in desperate need of political reform. If the writer's intent was to showcase how absolutely broken Piltover's justice system is, and how corrupt their politicians are, they did an excellent job with all of this nonsense. I can't be entirely sure whether or not the corruption was supposed to come off quite so strong. The swaying of the vote with a glare is the obvious part, but for the rest of this stuff, it could just as easily be one writing oopsie combining with another to a hilarious domino effect. Perhaps the writers never thought about the world building implications, and only wanted to introduce the council with this trial scene. And I can imagine the writers simply thinking, isn't it nice how Heimerdinger and Cassandra tried to speak up for Chase, completely ignoring the conflict of interest? Both of them should have recused themselves, if they were to come off as purely noble in this scenario. What bothers me is that neither of them is called out for this, nor is either of them painted as fully Machiavellian in the eyes of the narrative. Cassandra is snooty, yes, but not corrupt. Heimerdinger is averse to magic, he has his own agenda going on, but he is not corrupt. We are supposed to like and empathize with these characters. Heimerdinger especially is characterized as someone who places the safety of the city and its people first and foremost. And yet, he does nothing about the fundamentally unjust system he is part of. He has personally seen the city and its politics evolve, and he has allowed the structure of power to end up like this. Things like these are rather annoying, because I can no longer be sure about the author's intentions. How are we supposed to view the character? Is the character supposed to be corrupt themselves, complacent, or outright stupid? Or is this simply a case where the author didn't stop to think what the hell they were doing? See, if Heimerdinger is supposed to be secretly corrupt, then all is fine. But if he is supposed to be a paragon of good, which is more than likely, then stuff like this damages his characterization. Just something to consider every now and then. Be sure to stop and think for a second what exactly is happening in a given scene, the broader implications, whether you are following or crafting the story. In any case, this city is corrupt from the height of power, all the way down to the grimiest sewer, and that is the objective abject state of things as presented on screen. It's every man for himself, and in a way, that makes Jace and his almost naive idealism even more precious. An uncorrupt man amidst a corrupt society, at least for the time being.
And as always, a massive thanks to each of you for sticking around for this long. And a special thanks to all the supporters on Patreon, as well as an extra special thanks to my 10 euro supporters, Wyland, Jesaja Vanderwatt, Six Stars, Danny Kicks, and Clark Daniel Ivory. If you would like to join these fine people, or check out any of my other creative stuff, all the links are down below. Take care everyone, and I'll see you all in the next one.